Good evening. We are being recorded by the hour who sees all and knows all. Anyway, I'd like to welcome you this evening. My name is Marcus Phelps. I'm the chairperson of the Master Plan Advisory Committee. And uh, we started meeting last year in November of 2021. So it's amazing how time flies. We've done a lot in one year and we still have a ways to go. So uh, appreciate all the people who have participated on the committee and we will get to hear their names shortly uh, because I would ask our vice chair soon to do the roll call. But first I'd like to say that this is a joint meeting of the planning board and the master plan advisory committee. So we had the meeting posted uh, for an open, open meeting law considerations. And so I will now ask for a roll call of the members. Thank you. Okay, Marcus Phelps. Present. David Spina. Doug Moglin. Present. Brandy Brown. Here. David D. Delory. Here. Bert Hansen. Here. Dave McWilliams. Here. Norm Cheever. Here. Patrick Jung. Felita De Maria. Amber Bach. Scott Lehman. Dory Boyd. Roz Terry. Here. Jessica Whitmore Parker. Here. David Mathai. Marissa Cook Obergon. Present. Michael Doherty. Lucas Karen. Here. And Maria Michael. Thank you. Uh, just to note, we do not have a quorum of the planning board, but we do have a quorum of the master plan advisory committee. So we will proceed with the meeting. I'd uh, start out by saying that uh, the meeting is recorded. So anybody who was not here will be able to watch the meeting online. It'll be posted under the planning board's uh, page on the web our town website. So this evening, we're uh, going to do some discussions and uh, ask for your input on some of the parts of the plan. And in order to facilitate that, we have uh, Ken Camilla, who is the Deputy Director of the Land Use and Environment Staff, the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. He's uh, been with us pretty much since the beginning of our process. And uh, he's been very helpful in facilitating that. We worked very hard in getting the uh, public survey put together, and we got 900 responses to that survey, which to me is wonderful. That uh, was a really great turnout. We did do a lot of publicity. We have signs, and we still have signs out, Southwick 2040, and also an information sign as to what means we are having and plan to have. So Ken is uh, involved with that process and he'll also be co coordinating the preparation of the master plan itself. First in the draft form and then after the committee does a review and comments, we'll be finalizing that hopefully in the spring of uh, 2023. So with that, I'll turn it over to Ken who is gonna lead us through a presentation. Thank you, Marcus. Good evening, everyone. Um, as Marcus said, I am uh, Ken Pamia of the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. And there I often serve as um, a consultant for municipal planning issues and municipal governance, as well as um, some of the comprehensive and exercise that I'm doing on the ballot. So I'm very excited to be here. I've been very um, enthusiastic about this process because the committee has been doing such great work in both um, maneuvering through that survey, as well as planning for these next couple of engagement sessions that we're gonna be having for the community. So we're gonna start with the presentation and John Goddard, our town, your town planner, will uh, help us to take the um, power. Thank 
Let's see if I can wake it up enough again to get to the next page. Sure. <laughs> Oh, Great. Thank you, John. Um, yeah, so welcome. Welcome to one of two sessions. So we have this um, evening's uh, visioning session, and we'll have a, another one tomorrow, or, or Saturday morning from 9 to 11 a.m., also in person and virtual. Next slide. So I usually use this when I when I talk about the master planning process, and it's specific to um, when we launch a master plan process, finding commonness of the community members. It's often the community members that jump to um, create solutions before understanding what the uh, community issues and values have been identified as. So we've been rather methodical with the uh, master plan committee in identifying um, the progression by which we're going to be proceeding through this master plan process. The quote, great things are not done by impulse, but by a series of small things brought together by Banco is meaningful to me because it's a reminder that great things are done through a process. Uh, and oftentimes process takes time, especially master plan. Consider various community perspectives, weighing both the pros and cons, and basically defining recommendations on the community values, which we cut out um, through the vision session, which will come out a little bit through the uh, survey. We'll be having focus groups in the coming weeks, and as well as an implementation workshop later on in the spring before um, the master plan committee and the planning board uh, take their responsibilities to review a plan, review the plan, as well as the document. Next slide, please. So I think we've been here before, but March 1997, which actually is not an adopted master plan, but there was a lot, there was a planning process that occurred back then um, that um, obviously there were conversations about things like land use, housing, economic development that happened. But for whatever reason, the community took back it. And so um, those, however, those particular conversations that happened back in 1996, 1997, when we were going through this process, um, it does provide some good conversation for us and for the community to move forward, examining a lot of the goals and strategies that have been identified in that plan. And see whether or not it makes sense to continue doing that or something else. Next slide. So, as um, the vice chair listed all of the advisory committees, this is, um, this is just a listing of all of the advisory uh, committee that has been participating in this planning process. They will be important in reviewing the draft. As we continue to work on that, engaging with the consultant, our uh, partner in the planning commission, myself, um, in, in pursuing the, um, the questions and the responses in regards to the conversations that we have this evening, as well as throughout our engagement process over the next couple of months. So there's a lot, and I think that's great. And they all tap into various uh, committees within town and various levels of town government. Um, and it's also important to know that you have your support from your planning board staff, both John and Megan, in the planning board office. Thank you. Um, we also have a big team at the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission that's working on this particular plan. I'm serving as the project manager, but I'm also helping to draft the land use, housing, and certain infrastructure sections of the. Um, 
Go ahead. And we'll go, we'll go through um, what those elements are, but those are the ones that I'll be working on using. Um, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine other staff people that are working at various components of this particular planning process. And you can see the various elements and various uh, areas by which they will be uh, addressing and working with various separate of committees as well as master plan advisory committee in um, filling out any any uh, blanks or gaps in the information that they're collecting on their own. Next slide. So a little bit about the agenda. Um, we started at 6.45, so we're still in good time. Um, but um, we're gonna go through right after this. I have a presentation lined up on what is a master plan, what's already been done, what does vision mean or why is it important? And then we're gonna talk about breakouts, which is why you're here, um, to work with your fellow residents in the, in the master plan committee who are gonna be serving as facilitators and recorders um, in identifying Strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats throughout time. And then we'll recap later on in the evening, and then we'll talk about what's next and how to continue staying engaged. Next slide, please. So, what is a master plan? It, it's funny because it's not a required document. Um, master General Law calls out what 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 the components of a master plan are, but it's not a required document. And oftentimes they think communities examine the need for a master plan based on the want of grant funds, the want of other types of programming throughout the state, um, and to tap into those sort of funding to support uh, implementation or implementable strategies that are identified with from the planning process. So it, it's rather important by which um, we go through a community process to determine and fill in the blanks based on what is required and what is the state requirement for those items. Um, what it is, there's an actual mass general law attached to it. It's actually chapter 41, section 81, to that means anything to do. Um, it's a blueprint for the future. Uh, it describes the long-term vision and how to achieve it. So you'll see as you, as the community has the ability to review a document after the master plan advisory committee gets to take a look, there will be an area of the plan that discusses goals and strategies um, by which um, the community and various town levels of town government will seek to um, what's also important is that, that it's guiding zoning changes, capital improvements, budgeting, general decision making, and policy implementation. It's a blueprint. It's not a regulation. There may be regulations that are strategies from the master plan. So, for instance, if the, the committee and the community find that in order to implement strategies related to housing development, require a zoning bylaw amendment. Obviously, there's going to be uh, an entity, presumably the planning board, to examine those types of regulations. So it's not necessarily something that will be an actual regulation. It's, it, it wouldn't require um, a town meeting uh, item. Uh, the, the adoption of the mass plan does not require a uh, it covers a time frame from 10 to 20 years. So the committee has established year 2040 as this time frame. So it is a 20 year outlook and examining the types of things that may be helpful to um, meet the visions that the residents of South Africa. Um, there's going to be ongoing reviews at the beginning of the NAPS plan. Implementation committee after that. So the advisory committee, whether or not they decide to choose the next implementation committee to celebrate the fact that they adopted a master plan, 
Um, that's something for later, but there's a goal of the town to have a committee to look at the strategies that the town will identify during this process to ensure that it's moving on those strategies over time. Next slide. The elements of a master plan. So there are 10 and this master plan. There's, there's nine requirements in the master plan, but there are 10 of these. Um, in a master plan, as dictated by Mass General Law, there's a requirement for goals, establishing your goals, land use, housing, economic development, cultural and historic resources, natural resources, open space and recreation, transportation, public facilities and services. Climate adaptation and sustainability, which is not the required element, but an implementation and a strategy by which to implement many of the items that will be coming from our discussion regarding these various elements. So, the process by which we arrive here today is to review with the existing conditions to identify issues, challenges, and needs. And so, PPC staff, as well as uh, the survey, as well as any sense of information which we'll go through when we talk about doing a little snapshot into current demographics in, in Southway. Um, that's part of the particular review process. Um, the, in, the, the public input involves all of you and your engagement via the survey, via the focus groups, via the um, meeting here tonight and participating in our breakout rooms, as well as the implementation workshop and some future meetings that we'll have planned for this year. We're going to be developing strategies to the goals, um, to achieve the goals that are going to be set by the committee and by the community. So that's going to be part of this process as well. And then the implementation component follows. Where the implementation is an important part of this is that, again, it's, it's a policy guidance document. It's not something that is specific to um, a regulation, capital budget item. Um, it is something that the town should be reviewing when it talks about and it has to make a major decision um, based on all of your engagement that you've been doing so far. The legislative and executive bodies implement the church the plan's recommendations. So you have various levels of town government that are going to be responsible for this particular implementation schedule. Um, oftentimes, it includes the planning board, the select board, conservation commission, board of health, town staff, and department as well. Um, and yeah, the last um, bullets suggest that. Um, the various committees and commissions are going to play an important part in trying to implement some of those strategies. Next slide. So, what has already been done? I showed you that um, slide in the beginning that had the 1997 master plan. There was actually a plan 30 years before that, 1967. Um, the town has also gone through a community development plan, which was a plan in the early 2000s that was by executive order of the governor at the time, Governor um, The town went through a happy mitigation plan community process, a municipal vulnerability preparedness community resilience building workshop. So, what that is is uh, a lot of the various grants that are offered by the Commonwealth include um, the Mass Vulnerable Preparedness Grants. So that's your MVP grants. And um, there are specific projects that um, that funding source can um, fund um, any implementable strategies. And oftentimes, you have to go through this planning process in order to get that funding. And then recently, the Open Space and Recreation Plan years ago. Um, so there's, there's a lot of um, community engagement in various aspects, and I think the master plan will tie a lot of the various conversations that have been happening over time, 
into the particular document. Next slide, please. So why is visually important? It ties together what has been done and what needs to be done, um, both from examining what your current snapshot and the census and the survey results have, uh, what those have um, shown uh, will allow the connection between what actually can happen to implement some of the strategies that we can expand. It's an opportunity for community participation in the planning process. As Mr. Chair had said at the beginning of the presentation, 900 responses, that's, that's a great number. That is awesome participation by the town. And um, it's something to be celebrated as far as the, um, the town energy to really understanding that this is an important process. <laughs> Uh, it provides the feedback for a long-term achiever software. It's a cohesive statement crafted by you. So what will happen is we're going to be taking a lot of the various um, comments that are coming to the breakout rooms, the survey, the various focus groups to, to craft a vision statement. Uh, that's why an advisory committee will take a look at that and adopt some language in there. Um, we're going to continue to ask for your feedback to influence the plan goals and implementation strategies. There will be a um, an implementation workshop in the spring by which there will be another opportunity to talk through some of the, the conversations that we're having, we are happening now up until the spring when the draft will start of the plan starts to be drafted. The visioning also helps the software specific needs and values today. What worked in the past may not work now. And so a lot of the conversations that we're going to be having is taking a look at the, the former planning documents that you do have and see what makes sense to continue to lift or remove um, based on the community's values. And so the visioning, as I mentioned, will be crafted as well. From the process, but will not be final. We won't be finalizing the mission statement today. Next slide, please. So, what that does say. <laughs> <laughs> Since we have lots of data. Yes. <laughs> I can present the PDF if you want, guys. If you don't mind. Give me Thank you. Moment. So um, as uh, John, thankfully, we have a PDF that we can just share the screen. Um, that little box that has all of those characters says, data is an essential part uh, component of the master plan. Data of current conditions and trends strongly in the provision, as well as the goal of recommendations and implementation of the plan. So the PDF that uh, John will be sharing will include, um, uh, and this will be available on Tom's website, on, on the project website, include some data points. So as the, the um, presentation is um, working towards getting on the screen, right? Um, we have a snapshot of the various data that we've collected in the past few months. Um, Southwick's tax base is 87% residential, 5% commercial, 2% industrial, and 6% personal property. And that comes from the most recent 2020 census. All of our data comes from that. Uh, Southwest population is projected to grow by 867 people between 2020 and 2040. Um, so there is considerable population growth um, uh, forecast. Southwick senior population grew from 8%, grew 8% from 2010 to 2020. So that it's pretty sizable increase. Um, and I think that is generally the trend that you're going to find in many communities. 
out um, that the population is getting older. How do we help plan for them? How do we help them age in place? Those are conversations we'll be having. Most software workers commute elsewhere, and most software jobs are built by workers living outside the South. So there's a, a little table here that shows um, that about 79% workers employed in South Lake but live elsewhere. Um, but workers living in, so the workers living and working in South Lake make a little bit more, so it's about 21%. Um, South Lake residents working outside of South Lake. It's about 87%, where some of the uh, workers sitting and working somewhere are 12.7%. 81% um, of Southwick's housing is single unit detached homes. 29% of units are 60 plus years old. Um, but Southway has much newer housing than the rest of the county or the state, with 39% of the housing stock built since 1990, compared with just 12% of the average house. So there's a lot of new homes being built in Southway. And as I mentioned, um, much newer than the rest of the county, as well as the county. Next, uh, Southway's median household income was 87,748. So this slide is the survey, the, the component of the survey. The National Advisory Committee, were, they're working on, we're working on a way to condense a lot of the free responses that have happened um, with this particular survey effort. So um, for the meantime, um, there's a report um, that has some of the basic data that um, we can definitely share on the website. Um, surveying of current resident sentiment can inform the vision as well as the goal recommendation and implementation. As far as who responded, 900 responses, explanation point, woo woo. 65% um, of those respondents were over the age of 50. 33% of the respondents were retired, identified as retired. More than 50% have been residents of the more than 20 years. 44% of parents had an household with minor and adult children, and 91% of the respondents live in a detached single family home. So that gives you some idea of who was responding to the survey, as well as some of the voices that have been crafted with the survey results. 55% um, support of the respondents, 55%. Support identifying areas for mixed use development where housing business development could be found on the same structure at one point. 68% um, find wireless and fiber infrastructure very important that could be provided by the town in a couple of years. As I mentioned, the committee really wanted to figure out how to plan for 20 years out. So a lot of the questions were crafted in that way. 50% find Alternative energy, very important, that could be provided by the time in 20 years. 60% encourage business development, 55% encourage industrial development, 80% encourage agricultural development and software. 61%, uh, so related to transportation, I kind of aligned some of the elements based on the survey responses. 61%. Of the respondents and public access to elect electronic vehicle charging stations, somewhat or very important. 86% of the respondents like parking available at rail trailer and other accessible open spaces, somewhat important or very important. So those conversations are going to come out both tonight, both when um, we have a focus group, um, and that could be further refined over time to craft strategy and some based on some of these conversations. 78 percent believe there are sufficient housing options for themselves and their family. And 50 percent of the respondents want minimal residential development. 
58% are extremely satisfied, extremely satisfied with food services, 50% extremely satisfied with fire, and 57% extremely satisfied with ambulance. Ambulance. I'm sorry. So now it's time for our breakout. Um, and I'm just going to briefly talk about what both the people and the, the folks that are online as well as the heard what we're going to be doing this evening for the next hour. Um, we have some facilitators and recorders. They are your uh, committee members that will help us with the conversation. Um, so we're doing what we call a SWAT exercise, examining strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. A SWAT helps determine what is working, what isn't working, what could be improved, and what could be left behind as opportunity moves forward. So as I mentioned, we're going to be breaking out into groups, and the questions are going to be, what are your, uh, what are you defining as strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats in town? Each one is going to um, have about 15 minutes, and then there will be a component where each of the attendees will have five stickers to prioritize each one of those um, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Um, yeah, and then we will convene, reconvene in, uh, in an hour to debrief and um, summarize some of the, the major components of the discussion. We do have maps too um, that can be helpful for those that want to pinpoint areas of town where you may be identifying these various strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So um, ensure that um, if you are working with your facilitator and recorder that your note gets on the map. That's an important component of this as well. Um, and so, how many breakout rooms? Two. So we're going to count off one by one and two, um, and I'm just going to point to you, um, and we'll go from there. We're going to have one, two groups in here. Yes. So one in the back corner, one in this front corner. So I'm going to start with this general paper. Um, one. Gentlemen in the blue. One. Two. One. Two. Sir? Two. One. Two. One. You don't want to set up? Okay. One. One, two, two, one, two. I'm good. Right? So one's on the right, two to the back, and we will um, get started. Yes, for the Zoom uh, attendees, um, Doug Mulgren and Randy Brown are going to be facilitators. And uh, those um, in the breakout rooms, they will be joining in, in a couple of minutes as we get settled. But um, yeah, and we'll see you in an hour. Zoom friends.
How do you turn this on? So welcome back, everyone. I hope everyone's conversations were, were productive and that you got to hear from your neighbors and some of your friends as to some of these large ideas. Match. Um, with that said, we're going to try to stay on time. We're probably going to go a little bit. Um, but uh, we're still going to have 8 30 or something. Everyone's be mindful of the time. I'm going to start with this side of the room. Um, Dave uh, will uh, summarize the top five for each of the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. All right. Can you hear me? All right. Uh, he may, we're going to go through the group A over here. Uh, we're going to go through the top five to get five because there's five strengths at the bottom. So for strengths, the um, the number one strength that was identified in this group was rural character. Uh, the second one was location, so geographic location of the town. The third one was we are a small town, USA type of town. Uh, fourth was lake. And the fifth one was the agriculture field of the town. For opportunities, the number one opportunity identified was mixed use development. Um, number two was increased growth conditions. Uh, number three was smart growth and balance. So I think the kind of thing was about balancing uh, residential, commercial, retail, and industrial. Uh, number four was the opportunity to acquire additional open space. Uh, number five was cannabis growth, sales, and no mention of use, but just for the <laughs> for weaknesses, uh, it was number one was lack of healthcare in town. Uh, number two was lack of parking at the rail trail, lack of unemployment opportunities came in the third, safety patrol, oh, lack of employment. Yes, did I say anything? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> lack of employment in Southwick. Uh, lack of for uh, underutilized safety control on the lake, uh, underutilized senior center, um, no town center identity, and a core mix of industrial, um, retail, and commercial usage on college islands. So those were weaknesses. And as far as threats are concerned, uh, designated by only red dots. Uh, 
the loss of farms is number one. Uh, the increase in big black retail development in town is number two. Number three is unfunded mandates. And uh, a tie for the next position is uh, commercial development, uh, illegal drug use, and the general education service. That's specific to Southwick. I believe I heard it, but the overall general education system. So that is what we came up with. Looking forward to hearing the rest of the groups. <laughs> Okay, for strengths, our team said the number one was the lakes, number two was agriculture, number three was rural care, small town charm, number four was recreational areas, and number five was local businesses. As far as weaknesses go, lack of internet cable options and utilities was number one. Number two is unplanned growth. Number three is lack of downtown aesthetics and, and cohesive flow between the businesses. Number four was lack of sidewalks, and number five was political unrest. We had a tie. Number five. You know, it was pioneer at the area's current condition. As far as opportunities go, number one was opportunities for farmland, open space uh, properties. Number two, invest in infrastructure. Number three, stay current with technology and options, particularly with Table and four was save and so buildings. Number five, control growth, also tied with creating a aesthetically pleasing downtown. On the threats, number one was loss of farmland. We had a tie with two. Residential and business growth and development. I do that was current incoming residential residents. Okay. Number three was not maintaining our lakes and overcrowding of our lakes. Number four was lost opportunity. Loss of overuse. Pollution of land, national resources. Actually, that's the summary of our. Thanks, Norman. And Randy is going to summarize what the folks online. Yes, we had uh, maybe ten people at start uh, the session. I think we broke down in five or six towards the end. So I'll give everybody every one got a vote, one vote. So the uh, for the town strengths, first was farming land availability, uh, ability to grow and fix crops, uh, proximity to major cities and traffic, our lakes and natural resources, proximity to skiing, and low tax rate. All that folks. Town weaknesses were the uh, lack of infrastructure to support growth, such as sewer, fiber, gas, other utilities. Uh, weakness uh, need to expand the tax base beyond residential. Uh, question of what is keeping the, the next generation staying solid? They got a point of view votes. Uh, drinking water quality concerns, road conditions concerns, and the lack of uh, social services available. Such as for mental health, drug addiction, and other services. What are you going to have opportunities? Uh, the availability of farming land uh, was an opportunity to grow on the best growth of the best crops. Uh, open space used for renewable energy, such as solar. Uh, opportunity to put together a new business strategic strategy. Uh, how, we, how, we, uh, how can we um, promote growth? And another opportunity was to uh, expand recreation, arts, and festivals in town.
And finally, the threats, uh, pollution to the lake water, uh, having a larger tax base, and the aging population. I think it, it's really a testament to, to see that there is some overlap with a lot of the concepts that have been also, there are some overlap of things that you may find as strengths, opportunities. Um, they can also be a weakness and a threat. So um, I think as we continue to have this discussion, especially with the folks that are going to be coming on, on uh, Saturday and having the same exercise, uh, we'll be able to create a summary report uh, that will be posted online uh, on, the, on, the plan, uh, on the project website. Um, but really, this is to inform um, some of the, the community sentiments with regard to the issues that you are finding that are very important. Uh, and what you yeah. proved over time is that you want to celebrate uh, as your strengths and things that you want to have for that. Um, so we'll finish off the slides. Um, One second, Ken. Sure. Thanks. Shall we go to the next page? Yes. Next page. There we go. Yeah, so this is our ways to stay engaged. And so um, we, I think there was a question on the chat. We're definitely going to share this PowerPoint. Um, and it will be posted on the, the project website. But there are some QR codes. Um, there is the project website, obviously, that's a very important resource. Um, uh, the town website, which has the link to the project website. If you're like me and I'm old fashioned, I go to the town website for everything, and then I'll find um, the, the information that I need. And then there's a tool here um, that allows you to have continuous conversation. So it, it's a tablet. Um, and I'm trying to share. I haven't pulled up. Um, let's see if I can share. Just to quickly give you an idea of how to use it. Okay, so this is how it appears. You're going to click that link. You're going to use the QR code, but there are similar conversations that are um, that are breakout rooms had um, that for those that either had some additional entries that they wanted to contemplate. Um, this is an opportunity to put this on here. You also have the ability to like. You know, if you have social media, you have little hearts, you'll be able to do that with these as well. Um, and they are on this. So um, there's an opportunity to, to continuously engage with regards to this exercise. Um, and uh, presumably, before we move on to the next set of engagement, you know, we'll announce the last day. But that's that. So as I mentioned earlier, there's this is not the only opportunity to do a wide community-wide type of event. There's an implementation session. So you have your visioning, which will form a vision statement, and then you'll have an implementation session, which will review and go through the exercise of prioritizing strategies um, and having those conversations regarding recommendations for your master plan. So we'll make sure to um, inform you about that coming in the spring. Excellent. And then that's your final goodbye from Jock. Oh, and thank you for your uh, participation this evening. But um, both John's and mine's uh, contact information.
And again, this PowerPoint will be uh, posted to the project. All right, great evening. Great evening. Appreciate everybody spending two hours with us and uh, appreciate Ken coming uh, to help. So, uh, Jock, we all know Jock, and Jock was designed by Dave McWilliams' son, Charlie. So, we have to look at we have some t-shirts here, so Ken gets a job t-shirt for um, tonight and he can win it on Saturday and we do this all over again. So Ken, tell your friends and relatives what a great time you have. Still got tons of food and, uh, you know, we want to get that consumed. Um, let's see, what else did I have? Oh, we're going to give away some more t-shirts too. So here's a couple of uh, little criteria. And I have to be honest. Who's the youngest attendee here? You might be over on this side of the room. Okay. Oh, no. you, already, you already have a shirt. Okay, so it's Katie. All right, so after the meeting here, we all break up. Come up front and you can pick out your size. We have a small, medium, large, and extra large. All right, so the youngest, uh, so this is, who is the oldest? 60 plus? Yeah, hands up, 60 plus. 70 plus? 70 plus. 75 plus? 75 plus. How old? 76. All right. Okay, this is a little more challenging. The longest continuous resident of South America. Who has been a resident like 30 years? Uh, 35 years? 40 years? Whoa, have I got to jump off like 50 years? Yes. 60 years. Oh, oh we got 60 right here. 60 years of residence. How long residence? There you are. We get it. Um, on the other end. Yeah, on the other end. No, but it's pretty close, right? Pretty close. Anyway. The other one is uh, the newest list. Who just moved into something like a year ago? We don't have any new residents. Uh, I got to do that. Who moved in 10 years ago? How many years? Seven? I don't think anybody needs that. No? Seven. So we got back there. Come up and negotiate with John afterwards. All right. Uh, let's see. Keeping in, let's see, with the. Uh, oh, I want to thank the members of the Master Plan Advisory Committee who came here tonight and donated their time to do the jobs we needed to get done. The group is just amazing. I mean, these people. Got a lot of energy, a lot of smarts, and uh, we're getting the job done, I'll tell you. Anyway, uh, keeping with the open beat law, thank you. Yes. Uh, I need the energy and motion to adjourn. Second, second. Norm. Okay, motion made by Mr. Bowen, seconded by Norm to adjourn, or to adjourn all those on the committee. I can say it. Thank you.